it is always very exciting to work with uh, Lockheed Martin. And it's especially exciting when uh, I know about and, and feel so impressed that a company of your size not only has a CEO who sponsors and supports events like this in your, your, your work around diversity, but is also personally integrally involved in the process and has not only, again, sponsored this, but has been a participant in this program, in fact, uh, twice now. Uh, and to have people like you know, Bob Stevens and Shan Carr leading the effort uh, is certainly something that's really driving it, I think, in a very positive direction for, for all of you, uh, you know, globally. Um, let me first of all say good morning. Good morning. Oh my God, they answered back. <laughs> I'm not in New York anymore. <laughs> they never answer back in New York. This is going to be a good day. Uh, let me personally apologize for the um, less than optimal weather you're going to be getting later today. I, I have to tell you, I have the dubious distinction of being a magnet for bad weather. It is, it's truly remarkable. Um, do you remember those terrible rainstorms they were having in California? Mudslides, houses falling off. I was there. <laughs> wherever I go, it's just incredible, globally, out of the country, wherever. In fact, back then, this was you know, back in the winter, um, I left LA and I went north, very far north, up to Seattle. And uh, they weren't having rain, they were having freezing rain, of course, up there. And I'm in the hotel room, it's about four in the morning. I'm listening with half an ear to the television in the hotel. And the newscaster says, when you go out today, watch out for the black guys. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is going on in Seattle? <laughs> of course, she said what? Black ice. Black ice, exactly. That's what happens when you spend too much time in diversity. <laughs> you end up hearing things sometimes that don't even exist. But uh, what we're going to be talking about today, and we have somewhat limited time, so I want to try and hit this right on point, is uh, we're going to be talking about something that is really rooted in organizational communications and leadership. And I say that, and I didn't say diversity, because the roots of this really have to do with something that's broader than just diversity. Diversity ends up being a very important cornerstone to this, but it rests on a very strong foundation of organizational communication, how it has a direct impact on leadership. All of this material we're going to be talking about today is really founded in some very impressive research that was done at MIT by Mary Rowe. And in this work, she uncovered how the subtle, and in some cases, the near invisible things we do are infinitely more powerful and far more pervasive than any of the big, stupid things that people just don't do anymore. I sometimes compare it to managing the elephants while the ants walk by. We've done a great job of managing the very big, visible, tangible things, but we're being overrun by billions of ants, the small things that we just don't notice. These very subtle things that go on really drive what is really happening in organizations. It's not, in fact, if you ask people about leadership, if you say, what is leadership? People typically, when they define leadership, say a great leader is someone who motivates, inspires, uh, gets people to perform to their peak poten potential, gets people to, to operate uh, over team borders and cross lines, and those sorts of things. But that, that's typically what you hear. But the only way that a leader can do that is how I send you a message. That's the only way I can do that. And it's not so much what I say, but it's what you hear. That's where these subtle messages really